Now, this is a magnetism type question. It might be posed by uh, Reeds or Transport Canada, I guess. Uh, here we have basically uh, two long conductors uh, which are spaced 0.75 meters apart. And um, we are asked to calculate the force between them. And so let's start with, let's think about uh, here. Uh, we have a round conductor and a second round conductor and we want to calculate the magnetizing force. Now the magnetizing force H is given by the magnetomotive force or the magnetic source if you would uh, divided by the length. Now the length is the basically um, the length of the circuit over which the magnetism acts and typically what we'll find is that this distance right here becomes the distance between the two conductors but then the magnetism produced by the current in one conductor will basically form circles um, around the conductor and so the length becomes the length of uh, this uh, circle here. Now so the length of the circumference of the circle the circumference is given as pi times the diameter well the, the, the distance that we're given 0.75 meters is the distance between the two conductors which becomes I guess the radius of that circle so we have then the length is the circumference or 2 pi times the radius of the circle is basically uh, where we're going with that. Now in addition to that, uh, the MMF is equal to the number of turns or the number of conductors multiplied by the current. Well here we are considering just a single conductor and the force that it exerts on the other conductor. And so what we're saying is that the number of conductors or the number of loops, shall we say, is one, one conductor. And so from that, we can say that the magnetizing force is equal to uh, 2 pi, um, sorry, the uh, magnetizing force is equal to the MMF, which we have concluded is simply the current. Uh, divided by the length, which is 2 pi uh, times the radius or the distance that we've been given. Now, uh, here we have 1500 amps divided by 2 pi times 0 0.75 meters. And so that gives us a magnetizing force of 318.3 the unit amp turns per meter. Well, remember, the turns comes from the uh, number of conductors, which we have agreed was just one. Um, now, uh, so once we have calculated the magnetizing force, basically next we want to calculate the flux density uh, of the magnetic field produced by that single conductor. And flux density is given by B, it is equal to mu naught multiplied by H, the magnetizing force. And so um, here, uh, mu naught, remember, is the permeability of free space. It is uh, 4 times pi times 10 to the negative 7 henrys per meter. Um, let me do that over. Uh, we have 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 henrys per meter. And we are going to multiply that by the 318.3 amp turns per meter that we just calculated as the magnetizing force. Gives us flux density of 400 times 10 to the negative 6 and now the unit is Teslas. Remember that um, if micro uh, 
is 10 to the negative 6, uh, then we could equally say 400 micro teslas is the flux density. Now, uh, the force then, the mechanical force F, will be given as N times B times L times I. And here, remember that we have agreed that the number of conductors is simply one. Uh, as well, the length this time, um, we are thinking about the force per meter of length uh, that is produced. And so the length, we'll assume then one meter for that. So the force becomes the flux density, 400 times 10 to the negative 6 teslas. Um, multiplied by 1 meter, multiplied by our current 1500 amps. And if we uh, does the math on that, we should come up with 0 0.6, and now the unit of mechanical force is newtons. Remember that um, uh, we are assuming that each conductor uh, exerts a force of 0 0.6 newtons on the other. Now we did the calculation uh, taking only one conductor into account, but the idea is that um, uh, each conductor will exert this amount of force per meter on the other conductor.